Today, we'll be creating this particular loop. It's supposed to be some sort of a dense space scene, but it's up to you on how you want to use it. Without any further waste of time, let's start off creating it. In our default scene, we're going to actually keep the default cube, and we're just going to scale it down on the x-axis by something like 0.2. Then, we'll press G, X, and move it by one unit to the right. Apart from that, we'll just scale it on the z-axis by a really large number. So let's go with maybe 50, and also scale it on the y by something not too large, maybe 5. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and press Alt D X and just bring it to the side. Now that you have the two meshes created, you can again select both of them and press Alt D Y and bring them just so that they fit flush with each other. These two are what's going to help create the loop and then you can just select both of these and press Ctrl J to join them into one single object. And to change the origin back to the center of them, you can click Object Set Origin to Geometry. Now that you have this, you can go down here to the modifiers properties and just add in an array modifier and change the relative offset factor from x to y so we make x 0 and y 1 and that way we get a second pair that's fitting flush with the first one and of course you can just increase the count to maybe 10. Once you've done that you can select your camera press alt g and alt r to clear location and rotation then r x 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees you can also go to 7 and just grab it on the y to bring it back to the start but you'd be able to do the same thing even if you started from the center so this step is not compulsory then you press 0 to go into your camera view and go to your camera properties and change the focal length down to something like 12 just so that you have a much wider field of view and then you can go ahead and just click and drag from the junction of these two windows to add in a new geometry node editor select your cube and press new to add in the new geometry node tree now you could use a distribute points in volume node however i feel like that's going a bit too hard on my pc while i was trying it out so this time i'm going to test it out with a distribute points on faces node so just search for a distribute points on faces plug that in and immediately you get these points increase the density to something maybe like 15 and you see the points are way too large so reduce the density back to one and then press ctrl a and apply scale that way the scale gets applied and you get points of the actual size again now we can increase the density to maybe 10 and just make sure that you don't go overboard that kills your computer and you can see if you just expand the drop down over here you can check timings and you see how much of time it takes for each of these actions to be completed if this was a volume this would have taken about 800 milliseconds and that's what was destroying my PC. So since this is just on the faces and there's basically only two faces that are necessary, what you can do is press tab to go into edit mode and just select all of the other faces. So let's take this entire set. So press shift alt and select this edge. So that way it selects the top and the side edges. You can press X, delete faces, and you can do the same thing for the other one. You just select it, shift alt select, and press X, delete faces. And you could also just duplicate these to create like another level of density, but I'll do that in a separate geometry node tree itself. So once you're done with that, you can press zero to go back to your camera view, select the camera from the outline over here, go to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one so that you don't see anything outside the camera view. Now that you have this, you can select it again and you'll see that you want some sort of objects to be instanced on these points. So we'll press shift A, instance on points, and just plug that in here. Now we need to see what objects to be instanced on the points. So we'll search for an icosphere and just plug the mesh into the instance. But before doing that, we'll decrease the radius to something like 0 0.01 and then plug that into the instance. Now, if your PC is able to handle it, you can always increase the subdivisions just so that it looks a lot rounder. So right now you can see the edges. So I'll go down here and just increase the subdivisions to something like three. Apart from that, for now, I'll keep the density down at 1, just so that it's a lot lighter on my PC during this creation stage. The next thing is the scale on the Y can be increased to fake motion blur. So I'm just going to increase this to something like 5 maybe, and we can play around with this till we get what we like. So I'll go ahead with 10, and I'll reduce the scale on the Z to maybe 0 0.7, just to make them a lot thinner. Now that's what's going to fake the motion blur towards these edges. Apart from that, what I will do is take these and then just press shift D X and move it one step to the right. And for the second one, I'll press alt D X and shift it one step to the left. After which I'll just select it. And under the geometry nodes, I'll press this button to make it its own user. And this time change the Y value to one so that they're actual spheres and even the Z value can be one itself. So I'll have to apply geometry nodes 001 to this one. What I'll do is I'll just shift select the one to the right and then press control L copy modifiers. So there we have it. In fact, we can also just combine these two. 
So we can just press Ctrl J and they become a single object. Now we don't need these objects to keep repeating all the way with that many arrays. So we can actually just remove the fixed count from something like 10 to something like three or four. That should be enough. We'll keep it at five. Now that we're happy with that, we can go ahead and create the animation on our camera. So let's just select the camera, increase our timeline so that we can see it better. Go back to frame zero and then press I, location, rotation, scale. And then we want it to be a 10 second long animation. So we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and the end frame to 300. The output folder, wherever you want it to be. And file format is going to be FFmpeg video. Encoding has to be set to MPEG4 and output quality will be perceptually lossless. Once we're done with that, go to frame 300 and grab it on the Y axis by exactly one size of the initial cube. So remember you had a cube that's actually just this much thick. So if you actually zoom in and you've forgotten how thick it was, you can press three to go to the side view and just take a look at how many units that it is. So it's actually five units on this side, five units on that side. So it's 10 units thick. So on frame 300, we have to grab the camera. Let's select the camera and go out of edit mode. So you have to go to object mode, then select the camera G Y 10, and also just rotate it on the Y axis by 360 degrees and then press I location, rotation and scale. Apart from that down here, press T linear to make sure that it's a nice smooth loop. Now when you play it, this is the animation that you get. It's also far too slow right now because of the playback. So you can change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping just so that you get an idea of how fast it's actually moving. Now, of course, this might be too fast for you, in which case you can increase this to 600 frames and make it slower. But I think I'll go ahead with the speed itself. It's fine for what I'm doing. Once we're done with that, we can start off the texturing. So go back to frame zero and take the default light and press Alt G to clear its location. And just press seven on your numpad to go to the top view and bring the light to the end of your cube. So it has to come all the way up there. So just press G Y and move it back till about there. Once you have it there, go to the actual light properties and increase the power to something much larger. So maybe 10,000 will go with 100,000 or one lakh based on where you're from and also increase the radius by a lot. So we'll increase the radius to something like 25. Maybe we'll reduce the power to 50,000 to start off with and then we'll see what it is later on. We'll also set the render default. So just switch on blue and for now that should be all we need. Then we'll change the viewport display from solid to render. And this is what we get. Now in our world properties over here, we can change the color all the way to black. And this is what we get, but we can actually go to the light and increase it to 100,000 itself. Along with that, we can set a default material to our cubes. So let's just bring the group output a little further, press shift A and search for a set material node, plug that in right here, change the material to the default material. Now we can also do the same thing for geometry node 001. So just select geometry node 001, press shift A, search for a set material node, plug it in after the instance on points node and change it to material. If you want, you can also add in a set shade smooth node. So we'll do that as well. So just search for a set shade smooth node and plug that in. Go to the other geometry node tree. You can do that by switching this, but if you do switch it over here, remember you have to switch it back as well, or you can just select it from the actual objects in the viewport display. Bring the group output a bit to the side and then press shift A, set shade smooth. Plug that in and you should be done. Now we can actually change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. And all I'll do is decrease the roughness to 0.3 and increase the metallic to 0.5. Along with that, for the light, I'm actually going to select it and change the color from white to whatever color you want. I'll go with a hue of 0.5 and a saturation all the way up to one. The last thing that you have to do is again, change the shader editor window from object to world and in the world properties, just search for a volume scatter node, change the density down to something like 0.1 and plug the volume into the volume. Then continue to reduce the density till it's not washed out anymore. Once you're happy with that, all you have to do is go ahead and render the animation. Hopefully this was a short one. I didn't have too much time to actually record this. So there should be quite a lot of things that you can learn from this particular video. If you do create anything using it, be sure to share it with me because I love seeing all the things that you guys create. The next video is definitely coming out tomorrow. Thank you for watching this one. And until that video comes out, don't forget to stay creative.